Earlier this year, we pushed out support for ADAA FS4 frame synchronizers, the 4K model they have, and you could even see it at NAB 2019 in Las Vegas. It was demonstrated at their booth with our RCP. Now we also support FS2, which is an older frame synchronizer, but it is so widely used that I'm sure lots of you will be very happy to know you could use Skyhoy control panels to control your FS2 as well. In this video, I'll show you that this can actually be done and how it is similar or different to the FS4 integration we did. So basically, in this video, I have brought with me a um, Regfly Uno and we also have and RCP V2 right here. So those are the two devices I want to focus on. And um, bringing an RCP in here is kind of interesting because that allows us to use the form factor of a camera control panel, normally used for shading, but actually we're not shading the camera, but we are shading the post-processor, uh, which is, is frame synchronizing and also potentially color correcting the signal from the camera. And why not put that into an RCP? So you could actually have something that is a simulated uh, um, shading or CCU experience with cameras and video sources, which are otherwise not um, providing control points uh, in themselves. So we'll start out by looking at the frame, uh, sorry, the uh, Rack Fly Uno. Uh, it is currently connected to the frame synchronizer, and in fact, both of these panels that I brought are connected to the frame synchronizer simultaneously, so we could watch parameters um, being simultaneously operated from the rack panel and also the RCP. Now, on the Ragfly Uno, we have um, a menu selector over here. So let's go to the first menu, which is the color and program. And just to let you know, these configurations are very much aligned with the ones that we currently host for the Ragfly Uno and the RCP for the FS4. So that's the baseline. And I will invite you to watch those videos to pick up other details. Some of what I'm going through will overlap between those two, but there's a large degree of the same stuff happening here. So you see red, green, and blue gain, red, green, and uh, blue, black, those values, how can they be controlled on buttons? Well, because these are four-way buttons. So if you have followed our videos for a while, you will know what a four-way button is, but essentially it is an elastomer button where you can press the sides and up and down on the button. And if they are assigned to a parameter, which is normally uh, best suited for an encoder, then automatically the button will uh, allow you to adjust the value uh, up and down by pushing its side. So you can see I'm, I'm currently doing that with these uh, buttons um, and so forth. Uh, gamma, red, green, and blue gamma. Color correction can be turned on and off here. Currently it is turned off, but I can turn it on like that. And um, talking about these two panels working together, you can actually see if, if you look here, we have the color corrector enable disable button right there. So as I disable color correction here again, why do I need to press it twice? Maybe somebody forgot to make that a, add a toggle button, actually. Maybe we should explore the configuration. Or maybe I'm not clever enough because it's actually the sides. Uh, okay, so it is toggling as I'm pressing the sides. That's my issue. But you can see that it's reflected on the RCP as well up here. So when I enable it now, then it's enabled up there. All right, so uh, the same would be for program. You can see program is now disabled and then it's enabled up there. And likewise, if I took the panel over so we could actually look at the parameters for color adjustment, you'll see up here we have the gain. The gain values will be adjusted here and it will be reflected up there as well. If I am changing the gain values there, it's going to be reflected here. So perfect correspondence between the panels and the FS4, FS2, sorry. Those two panels, they do not know about each other. They are just connecting to the same device, pulling state out of the frame synchronizer. So that's awesome. Gain, uh, black and uh, hue for the program. So in fact, the gain is normally uh, something that we will map to the joystick, but I'll get back to that. Uh, if we go to the legalizer scale of ROI section, then we have um, all parameters for uh, legalizer on off and the parameters related to that. Custom size and aspect ratio, position and so forth for the um, um, uh, DVE of, of uh, yeah, what do we, what? Uh, region of interest scaler. 
we can also set left and right position, top and bottom. Or wait, this is actually cropping, I think. I think we'll have fun with that on the RCP. Um, so if we move on, we can see we have input format selection here. Um, is it input and format? Yeah, so we can select input, uh, SDI and black. Uh, what is happening if we have a signal loss and so forth? Maybe you can read what is in these displays. And also, you may ask now, what, what, which of the two frame synchronizers inside this product am I working with? And if you look at this button up here, it is actually toggling forth and back between input no number one and two. And there you see, this will affect all the settings that we have. So for frame synchronizer one, it's SDI one input. For frame synchronizer two, it is SDI two, and so on. Um, Let's move on to audio and presets. So we have some audio options here, which are also found on the RCP. Then we have presets we can recall. And if I hold down the shift key in this section of the panel, we can access other presets up to 20 in this case. And we have a factory reset option over here as well using the shift key. The shift key is actually only available on this fourth menu. That's the only place that we decided to put it because everything else was nicely mapped out all to all these many buttons. So when you buy a Rackfly Uno and it comes to you with a different configuration than FS2, what do you do? Well, um, with a USB cable, you can always connect our controllers to your computer. Then you bring up the fir firmware application, click online configuration. That will take you to our website where you can see the serial number of your device is recognized. So it knows which configuration was most recently uploaded to your device. So you can just pick anything else. And in this case, you can see that the FS4 is just a different configuration you pick. All you need to do right now is go back to the uh, firmware application and press check for updates. It's going to pull a new firmware for your device uh, right out of the internet. Now, I'm going to put this aside because I now want to move over to the RCP panel. So the RCP is set to channel number one. I can change the channel by holding down the shift key and I can go to channel two like that or back to channel one like this. So that's the way I access the two frame synchronizers in the product. We have typically um, the active panel on off. So when I press that one, all settings will be um, like disabled. So you can't change anything as long as that's the case. That's the general panel option. Then we have the PROG AMP enabled and color correction enabled. Those are um, turning on and off, yeah, the PROG AMP and the color correction parameters inside the product. And um, finally, we have the preview button, which is hooked up in normal ways. Let's take a look at the iris joystick. So basically, I want to move it so that you can see the uh, display um, on top as well. And uh, the, the iris joystick is obviously not correcting iris on the input source because it is just an SDI source going into the frame synchronizer, but it is manipulating the gain of the PROG AMP. So if the PROG AMP is, is actually selected, uh, let me just turn off color correction there, we should be able to see that it's changing the, um, the gain of the input source. So this is the max gain I can provide, 1.50, and I can take it down from there. I can also adjust the master black. So notice as I'm turning the ring, I'm adjusting the master blacks uh, or the blacks of the image like that see. And these things are actually found if you go to the um, to the program menu, you can see the the master black settings are found in the menu up there. Likewise, the gain are reflected in the display on the top here. Now, um, what else do I want to show? I, I want to move quite quickly to the top section of the RCP really, because in the top section, you can see this is a menu selector. I can choose the various color correction settings on the first menu. And if I press the upper side and the lower side, on the upper side, I access gain, red, green, and blue. I have, uh, when I, I press the lower side, I have gamma, red, green, and blue. But in both cases, I have black, red, green, and blue right there. And you can see currently the color corrector is off. So if I turn it on, you see radical changes to the picture. And that's because I've been playing a little bit with it. So maybe I want to move these parameters back to the uh, to the default somewhat. Sometimes I can press and hold to reset a value. That's not the case today. But I can normally press the button once and I will have a quicker uh, movement of the uh, parameters like I do right there. So I'm now normalizing the picture a little bit more. If I press, then it will move in coarser steps. Okay, and finally the gain value. So you can see I'm now 
kind of normalizing from the freaky scenario I had just before. I turn off the color corrector again, move on to program. I already covered program with the joystick, the blacks, hue and saturation are there. I can turn on and off program here. That is, by the way, doubled by the button right here. So when I enable program on this button, you see it's the same parameter I'm adjusting. We just decided to put it both places. Um, the legalizer has parameters sitting right there again on off. This is um, all standard stuff. The, the Roy scaler, region of interest scaler, can be turned on and off. So uh, you see the various modes are changing in this tile. And then the full mode, which might be the most useful, is something that we have a direct access to enabling on this button. So um, I, I'm more interested in looking at the scaler. I would like to see if I can um, have fun with that. The, it's currently on the custom scale position feature is on or off here. So that's also doubled on this one and all my parameters are here. So what I want to do now is to change the, the scale of the, the picture. So I'm basically scaling it down now to 50%, right? And then I can play, play with the um, custom, with the aspect of, of the picture as well. Let me press and hold. It's not resetting. Sometimes it's resetting. It depends on how we implemented it. So not today. Um, position obviously is something that I can play with using these two knobs here and uh, moving it quickly to this position. Then notice if I press again to have finer movement, I can basically tweak it in place on the encoder. Moving on, we have this one, which is um, giving us access to stuff like input, uh, the source in case of signal loss, output, aspect ratio, so forth, status, uh, are found here. We have the fan speed. And I can hear the fan is moving quicker on the device. We don't know why this is put out in, in the product call. It's kind of funny to play with. Then we have audio features here. And then finally, you. Uh, so all of this stuff you have seen on the Regfly um, Uno already, but uh, you haven't seen presets yet. So in this case, presets has been broken out onto the buttons up here on the top of the RCP. And if you um, press the preview button on the upper side, we have something called hijacking, which means that this display will now show what these buttons are doing. So there you can see preset 1 to 8. And as I'm pressing these buttons, I'll be able to load these presets. To be honest, I don't know exactly what are on them. So therefore, I am um, not sure if they are doing anything. At least preset 2 did something. But they are accessed like that. If I if I press this one again and I hold the shift key, you can see that I'm I'm actually having presets 9 to 15 up there. And on the last key, which has been colored white, I can go to my factory preset, which is nice. I want to go to factory preset by clicking that button. Ladies and gentlemen, this was the FS2. Guess what? We are going to work with the FS HDR as well so that we cover the whole range of frame synchronized from AJA. Maybe it will be ready for IBC. We'll see. But thanks for watching this one. And let us know if you have um, any uh, requests. We offer it in two standard configurations, the RCP if you are that kind of guy, or you can have a rack unit for access parameters in frame synchronizers.